All right, I'm going to go over our quick uh, workflow introduction to Meerkat. First thing we do, we go to the website and download the EXE. This hasn't actually been downloaded that many times, so of course Chrome will ping it. It'll be fine. This probably won't happen for you. Yes, run. Okay. Now we have Meerkat running. Done. Make it larger. Okay, so we need something to go in here. So we load up our trusty Inkscape. Let's go ahead and draw a box really fast. And to show off the uh, raster capabilities, let's uh, drag in a raster. So let's uh, sure load this up. Okay, there's a giant image. So let me set this down to zero-ish. All right. Now I should be able to just put this in here. I'm just doing it quick and dirty. Obviously if you know what you're doing you're going to do way better than this. Okay, so we have a, an image and a vector. So let's save it out. Uh, I will call it my example. Okay, now we grab this example, we drag it onto the uh, scene, and we have it. Okay, uh, let me get rid of that path. Okay, um, set the step up to four. Please note that it will go up really large. Step is also the scan gap, so it's the number of uh, steps between each uh, raster line. And you typically want to set it up to about four or three. In Meerkat, though, it's set it on a per raster basis. All right, now uh, I still want to cut this thing out, so uh, let's go ahead and do a convex hole on it. This will create a thing. Let me drag it into the uh, current project here. Okay, 20 is a little too big. I need about five to make it uh, cut, and so it will be there and cut afterwards. And then we press the raster button. Please note, since the image doesn't have actual pixels, it has uh, fake pixels, it needs to uh, fix that. So press the button, it will fix that. Now you'll see that the actual pixel, see that its size is changed now from its uh, fake size initially. Okay, and we're running. You'll note that it has a beep and home added to the spooler. All right. So in controller, we can see the uh, actual packets that it's sending to the controller. We can look at the entire packet log as it currently stands. Okay, we also have navigation. Uh, basically, you go each direction. This one's a special. It lets you burn a pulse for 50 milliseconds or so. You can set how long you want to do it if you just want to do one little ping of light. Uh, you can set the board settings, you can automatically lock the rail, beep. Uh, I'm using mock because I'm not actually hooked up to it, but uh, if you change your units, you get different scaled units in the uh, size here, so you can change it to whatever you like. Okay, and there's also a USB log. Since I don't actually have a USB connected, uh, I'm using mock. If I click connect, it'll say it's not found. Uh, you can check there for a bunch of instructions for what you'd want to debug things. Okay, so it's currently going to run my uh, image and my path. And this is going to take a while. Alright, so while it's running, I can move the image over here. Select it again. Uh put it over here, and then run again. And it will start a second job in the same thing. So you can just sort of queue up some jobs and move stuff around while it's uh, spooled. Because it should save this stuff. So it'll still be here. You can tell that it's limiting the write buffer. If I remove this, it will write all the buffer it possibly can. So what it's doing is it's writing to uh, a fake buffer and then 
using that to show you what it's doing so it only keeps a few K but now it has uh, like 700 K and uh, the beep has to it will only beep when the uh, when the buffer is empty so it's held up there and the controller will just keep sending out packets in the background okay that about does it for this uh, quick run through of this workflow okay so let's kill this now this is blocking it um, issue emergency stop and close okay Alright, and let me show you a really fast, better way of doing it, rather than using Inkscape. We just drag an image in, set the size, set it to dither, then we click laser. Done. We are now doing a perfectly fine, basically flawless uh, lasering. Because most of the settings most of the problems you run into are with the scale and rescaling it and this is just a literal one-to-one -one on the image so you'll get every pixel equals one thing and it's a significantly better way of doing it so right out of the gate you can do that. you can also do it in color it'll just use the power modulation so if you if you're doing it in color it will uh, do the uh, PPI power modulation on the colored image and give you some result. Okay, so it's no longer writing, so the background changed color. And... But it still has all the buffer in the controller. And... Uh, the right head has ended. So, let's go ahead and kill that. Thank you. That should be basic workflow.